What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from Singapore. Let's do it. Welcome back Island Hoppers. Today we are going to continue exploring Singapore. As you saw in our previous video, we showed you the best things to do. Now we're going to do the full travel guide. Check the description below for the link to the things to do video. All right, so here we are in front of the Mer Lion, which is half mermaid, half lion. And you can see it's a fountain that just pours into Marina Bay here. It's obviously a mythical character, but it's something that you'll see across Singapore. Singapore gets its name because the man who originally arrived on the island said he saw a large lion, which is a singhaw. And here we are at the Singapore Flyer, the actual Ferris wheel. We're going to see if we can go up there and ride it. It moves pretty slow though, so we're not sure. So it's $40 Singapore per adult. That's around 30 US. It does take about 30 minutes to do a full circle. From here you get great views of you get a large air conditioned capsule that you can fit your whole family in, or if you're all by yourself, you'll probably share the capsule with other people. And the big thing here is the 360 degree view you get from the very top of Marina Bay and Gardens by the Bay area. And as we show you around some of the views of Singapore from up top around the downtown, I also want to tell you if you check the links in the description below, there's timestamps allowing you to click around the video. Also, I want to say there will be video links to best areas to stay in Singapore and things to know as well as things to do. So definitely click on those links to watch those videos if you have plans to visit Singapore. Well, we're here at the Active Garden where you can play a variety of different instruments. Let's see what this one does. Just walking around Marina Bay Sands all the way towards the Super Tree Grove here. It's really a peaceful walk. It's good for people who like to do outdoor activities as it is a peaceful, relaxing stroll along the bay. And here we are at the Super Trees. We're gonna go up to the top of the observatory and do the skywalk. And just a couple facts as we go around the Super Tree Grove here at this skywalk. So there is 5.4 million people who live in the city of Singapore, which is also a country with 64 different islands. There's one big island, right? But 63 other ones. Now it is also one of the greenest cities in the world, as they like to call it, a city inside of a garden. Another thing to know is the language they speak here, they call Singlish. So it's a mix between like a Malay local language and English. So if you hear someone saying, it's over there, law, or it's okay, law, they're basically being colorful with the language. And as you can see over here at the Super Tree Grove, they have an observatory, the skywalk, and it's just generally a nice place to take pictures, especially at night. The observatory up here is great because you can see all around the Super Tree Grove, the Gardens by the Bay, and even out towards the Straits of Singapore and the Straits of Malacca. There is a nine Singapore dollar admission fee to get in here, but once you're up there, you will see there is a cafe. And even if you go all the way up to the top, you have this like AstroTurf scenic viewpoint. Now remember, this is just one area of Gardens by the Bay. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to another exhibit here, which also has an additional entrance fee, but it is called the Cloud Forest Avatar World. So we're going in the cloud forest. Singapore is known as a city with many man-made waterfalls and this one inside the cloud forest is really spectacular. And you can walk all around the cloud forest here inside the dome and then you can go all the way up to the top. There's many different 
plant species you'll see all along here. So definitely check out the aerial walkway when you get inside the dome. And these avatar creatures make it interesting for kids. And when you are there at the bottom and you're heading up, you take the lift to the Lost World. And up here is where you're gonna get the real spectacular views all around. You can go behind the waterfall, depending on what level you're at. You can walk around the skyway. I mean, look at this view looking down. Now for the best view, as I mentioned previously, the waterfall view. And on the way out, you go through this exhibit where you see these stars on the ground and they spread like the Milky Way as you walk on them and the kids love it. And next up, we're gonna head over to the Flower Dome. And now we are in the Flower Dome. The Flower Dome offers a variety of different subclimates across the world, so you'll be able to see a bunch of different environments inside of the Flower Dome. This one was an all right exhibit, it wasn't my favorite, but uh, many people do love coming here to take pictures. And it really does live up to its name, the Flower Dome. And that's a wrap from the Gardens by the Bay. What do you guys say we head north up to check out some animals? All right guys, we've made it to the Singapore Zoo. We're gonna go around here and see what kind of animals they got. The Singapore Zoo does have a wide variety of animals. We actually have a full travel guide for the Singapore Zoo, approaching 1 million views on this channel, so it's a really popular zoo. They've got lions, they've got giraffes, they've got elephants, they've got orangutans, which are probably my favorites. They've got hippos. You'll see when you get here, this is quite the exhibit. Tickets to the Singapore Zoo range anywhere between 38 Singapore dollars to as low as below $30. I've seen if you go online, you can find some websites that have codes that will get you a lower price. So do search Google before you get there to see if you can get a better price. must say the proboscis monkey with that nose has got to be one of the most unique looking animals I've ever seen. Also right next door is River Wonders and the night safari. We'll show you around River Wonders. This is actually where you have to go to see the panda. I would stop short of calling River Wonders an aquarium but it does have some aquatic tanks. The main objective here is to show you what goes on around the world with the rivers from the Amazon to some of the rivers in Asia and even the Mississippi River. And as I told you, this is where the panda is. I find it odd that the panda is not at the Singapore Zoo, but rather here at River Wonders, which means you do have to pay for an additional ticket to see the panda if that's your thing. And here we are at the Botanical Garden of Singapore and it's free admission. The only time you have to pay is if you go to the Orchid Garden, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We will be going there. It is 15 Singapore dollars per person, but the Botanical Garden itself is free. 
The Singapore Botanic Gardens is actually one of the only gardens in the world to be recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. So this botanical garden is world renowned. Yeah, and as I said, it is 15 Singapore for non-local residents. Local residents is five Singapore per person. But the cool thing about this place is it's UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here we are at the VIP Orchid Garden where these are hybrid orchids that are sometimes named after heads of state from around the world. Like right here, you can see Lee Kuan Yew. Hey, it's pretty cool. You might end up one day having an orchid named after you. You know, and if you want to take your picture with the orchids, right here, photo spot. It's a bit hot out here, so we're getting some coconut water. All right, so after showing you around some of the cool ecological things around Singapore, like the zoo and the botanical gardens, what do you guys say we head around the city and show you some of the nightlife areas? So here we are at Clark Key. We're going to show you around Clark Key and Boat Key. Let's do it. The area is really known as the Keys. That's spelled Q-U-A-Y. There's actually three main keys. There's Boat Key, Clark Key, and Robinson Key. Nowadays, it's a popular spot to hit up some seafood restaurants along the river and do some shopping. And they sit along the Singapore River, which was a primary waterway during the establishment of Old Singapore. And as you would imagine, why do you think they called it Boat Key? Well, there used to be lots and lots of boats. If you look at old black and white photos, you'll see just how busy Boat Key was. Well, we're down on Boat Key with a Singapore sling. You gotta try one of these Singapore slings. A Singapore sling, or known as a Sing Sling, is just a signature drink that comes from Singapore as though it was a Mai Tai or a Pina Colada or a Long Island iced tea. It's just the signature drink from Singapore. And the typical recipe that would go into it would be something like cherry brandy, some pineapple juice, grenadine, fresh lime juice, and gin. Other mixers go in it depending on where you get it, but for the most part, you can expect those main ingredients. So it's all about the gin. Down here along the river, this was really the old historical area of Singapore. So you'll see lots of historical relics and statues, monuments, all of that stuff, including the Kavanaugh Bridge. It's also worth noting that Boat Key is right next to downtown. But now that you've seen what it looks like in the daytime, let's show you around the night.
nighttime on the old Singapore River. It's really nice, huh? Also, if you guys were looking for the local beer, you want to know what the local beer is, it's called Tiger Beer. You go out late at night, you'll get true drunken noodles right here in Singapore. We're at one of the hawkers in Boat Key. It's about 11 p.m. We've had a couple beers after the World Cup and uh, we've got some drunken noodles. You can see fish ball right here. A little bit of some meat. I think that's liver. Okay. And when it comes to accommodation, you can see the rooms are fairly small. I mean, you can get larger rooms, but for $120 a night, this is pretty much what you're going to expect. As far as transportation and getting around, you're definitely going to want one of these MRT cards, but they say you can use a Visa or a MasterCard to just simply go. Also, another app that you're going to want to download for sure is Grab. And here we are at the Art and Science Museum. We're gonna go inside there. It looks like Buddha's hand or a lotus flower. You decide. And I'm referring to the unique shape and architecture of this Art and Science Museum. There is a few different exhibits here, so do pay attention to what exhibit you want to see exactly because each one requires its own entry fee. But as you can see right here by this drawing, it says, glass tube, and then palm of Buddha. So I guess it is the palm of Buddha. By far and away, the most popular exhibit they have here is this Crystal Palace in the Future World exhibit. Uh, a lot of young people like to go here and take pictures when they're walking through. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's a good place to take pictures and an interesting light show. This interesting contraption that I'm putting on my head supposedly allows me to send my brainwave signals to this interesting looking contraption right here. Well, once I put this thing on, I can use my brainwaves to manipulate this unique looking structure. Right outside of the Museum of the Future is going to be Marina Bay Sands, which is that big hotel you see there with the observation deck on the top and the mall down below. But also you have some bridges that you can walk across the Marina Bay to say the promenade or some of the other areas.
right guys here we are at the shops at marina bay sands let's go inside yeah so inside the marina bay building you can see they have this waterfront right here where you can actually take a boat up and down kind of like a inside venice And as you can see, Marina Bay is a mall, a hotel, a casino, and also a rooftop bar with a pool. The developer of this project was the same guy who actually built most of Las Vegas, Sheldon Adelson. So he is no longer on this planet, but he was the guy who basically made this all come true. And here we are at the National Gallery of Singapore. It's an art museum. Let's go inside. Tickets to the National Gallery of Singapore are around $14 per person. Well, $13.50. But again, if you go online, you might be able to get a better price using welcome codes or whatever you can find. The building itself is very impressive, but what you'll see inside here is multiple levels of art exhibits. Everything from futuristic to rustic and old to cultural from around the region of Southeast Asia. What we'll do now is we'll show you some of these unique buildings they have in downtown Singapore that really incorporate the garden and the tropics into the building's structure. It's like an infusion that you really only see here in Singapore. As you guys know, Singapore is known as a city inside of a garden, meaning the whole island is like one big garden and there's a city built inside of it. If you look right behind me here, you can see the Park Royal Collection building. Up there they have like a forest growing on the top of the building on multiple different levels. There is quite a few buildings that have this kind of architecture where they grow gardens along the side of the building. All right guys, we have made it down to Chinatown. We're gonna walk around here and see what's going on with the food and what's going on with the vibes. There actually is several areas around Singapore that have a cultural representation, such as Chinatown. Chinatown is on the outskirts of downtown. There's also a Little India, and then there's Haji Lane, which is more of a local Malaysian Islamic presence. So you do have this Asian fusion happening here in Singapore. When you're down in Chinatown, aim for Temple Street. It's a one-way street right in the heart of Chinatown with the Outram planning area in Singapore. So this is
If you really love Chinese food, this is where you want to get your Chinese food, right here in Chinatown. Now, let's go check out Haji Lane. All right, guys, we've arrived at Haji Lane right here in the Muslim area, so let's walk around. This area is actually the Kempong Trail. This is where Muslims would come during the Ramadan season or anytime they were fasting. They would wait for the call to prayer here and then they would break their fast. Let's talk about history here in Singapore. How did it get its name? Well, Singapura, it's because the Sultan, when he arrived here, said he saw a lion. That's why he called it Singapura, Singapore but there's no evidence that lions actually lived here. Next, it is a culturally diverse place. Multiculturalism is very real here. You have Malay, you have Indians, you have Chinese, which are called the Peranakans, indigenous people, which are considered mostly Malay. You also have Indonesians, so it's very diverse. Also, the British were coming here. That's why you'll see things like Ben Kulin or Raffles, very British colony uh, here dating all the way back to the early 1800s. And the main thing that makes this such a geographically important position in history is because it's at the very bottom of continental Asia, and it's actually at the edge of the Malaysian Peninsula, if you look at a map. So right there, it connects to the South China Sea, the Straits of Johor, and the Straits of Malacca. It's a very important shipping route right here in Singapore at the very edge of the land in continental Asia. After all this walking and touring, it's about time we show you guys around this food scene. So you're gonna wanna check out some food hawkers. And right now we're gonna show you Lao Pa Sat. And here we are at one of the best hawkers in all of Singapore, right here in downtown called Lao Pa Sat. Let's go inside. And here in Lao Pasad, you can find tons of different cuisines. You can find Korean, Japanese, Vietnamese, Western food. You can find uh, Malay food, Indonesian food, local Singaporean food. The variety is endless for your taste buds right here. Wonton noodles and char siu. It seems like that's what I always gravitate towards. This is a pork, and that's a chicken or a duck. I'm not sure. All right, guys, we've made it to Little India. We're going to walk around and show you this place.
All right, we're doing a haircut in Little India. Yeah, so I'm finished with the haircut. I thought it turned out quite well. We got a mango drink here. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's mango. It tastes delicious. We have biryani rice, chicken tikka masala, and butter chicken right here. And then we have two garlic naan. And when coming to Singapore, you might want to consider going to the National Museum of Singapore. Let's go inside. So it's 15 Singapore dollar per person to go to this here Singapore National Museum. There is two levels, but we can't film or record in here because no videography or pictures are allowed. Interesting history on the building here where the museum is. It used to be a library and in 1890, you can see the picture right here. It's called the Raffles Library. All right, guys, we're going to Sentosa Island. We're going to take the Sentosa Express. So it's 98 Singapore dollars for adults and 78 Singapore dollars for kids. That comes out to around about $75 per person for an adult. And another thing to do is go to the Singapore Aquarium right here in Sentosa Island. And out here on Sentosa Island, they have a casino. So out here in Sentosa Island Casino, you need to bring your physical passport to go to the casino. So they won't let you in with a digital copy. It has to be your physical passport. Well, I got some good news for those of you who love Sentosa. They got some new projects coming, as you can see right here by the mock-ups. All right, so we're at the last station. This is actually the, where the beaches are. You can see indoor skydiving. They have zip lining and some other activities. We're gonna walk around, show you some of the beaches. This beach here is known as Palawan Beach and it might just be one of the best beaches in all of Singapore.
Now we are here at Palawan Beach, which is one of the best beaches on Sentosa Island. Alright, so we're at the other beach called Soloso Beach. This is another beach on Sentos Island. If you plan to visit Sentosa Island, you may just go ahead and get a hotel out here for a couple of days. You can stay outside of Sentosa Island, but I found it to be probably in your best interest if you plan to really experience this area, just get a hotel out here. It's a little bit more pricey than the rest of Singapore, but in the mix. Here we are at Suntech City. Looks like they have an event going on with some sort of costumes, but also this is a place you can get duck tours and big bus tours right outside of Suntech City. It's also a big mall. She's going to put some moisturizer on my face and see if it's any good. And obviously getting a boba tea. This is a lychee. Lychee boba tea. All right, now we're going to the night safari here, right next to the Singapore Zoo, starts at seven. All right guys, here we are on Orchard Road. This is a great place to come in the daytime and the nighttime, but we're gonna show you around nighttime Orchard Road right here. It is a little bit towards Christmas, so expect some lighting. Orchard is a popular area with both locals and tourists because it does have some nightlife, 
It also has many malls and high-end luxury hotels located here, including the Hilton and the St. Regis. All right, guys, that's a wrap from Singapore. We're going to do a things to know, things to do, and best areas to, to stay in Singapore. So stay tuned for those and click one of the links to one of those videos right here at the end.